One of the biggest arguments all the time I see it is copper wire versus copper clad aluminum, OFC versus CCA. Um, you know, there's pros and cons. A lot of people, the cost of the, the aluminum, but the conductivity of the copper is far superior. A lot of people like the corrosion resistance of the copper better. Um, I'm not here to settle that debate, but I am going to just provide some more information on the debate. Um, so what I did is I went and got approximately three feet of, this is New Concepts Copper Clad Aluminum. It is their basic cable, one zero gauge. And then I have some welding wire here, some OFC. This is EB Flex, and this is one zero gauge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a similar current through both of these wires. I'm going to try for a little over 400 amps to, you know, make sure that we're getting enough current through. And I'm going to measure the voltage at the start and at the end. And we're going to compare how much that voltage drops. Then I'm going to do the same for the other. And... Yeah, hopefully we'll get some good information on this. We will actually see the difference in voltage drop across each of these wires with the same amount of current going to each. So um, without wasting any more time, I will go ahead and show you the test setup and get it all set up. Okay, so for the test, um, at the positive terminal of my battery going to this distribution block, and then I am going to run the each run of wire directly down to this terminal right here. Um, I'm going to have probes hooked up kind of on the inner lip here, as well as the inner lip down here on both. And then I'm going to do the current test and we'll see from here to here, which is just traveling through the wire, exactly how much power was lost. Um, so let me go ahead and first I will do the copper wire and we will check it out. Okay, so I was just making sure that everything was calibrated. Um, does look like, well, I need to unplug the charger so we stop that current. Um, but it looks like they are about even 14.76. I have them both hooked up right here just so I could make sure that they were even with each other. Now, I will go ahead and move the other one down, and then we will pull some current through it. You're only going to see the current on one of them because I only have it flowing through one of the shunts. I'm just using the other for a direct battery monitor. Um, that way we can see the voltages. So you can see uh, we're within point 0.1. Let's go ahead and run some current through this. So it looks like we're getting about 0 0.35, 0 0.34, 0 0.35 or so. From this three foot run of one zero copper. Okay, and now the same test on the copper clad aluminum wire. New concepts. Let's see. Okay, so you can see we are dropping well over half a volt. About 0 0.52 volts using this copper clad aluminum cable. Um, so see, this is you look over here and you have a huge base note and on the battery side it's good but on the other side of the wire 
I mean, you're sub 11 now. So this isn't advocating for one and against the other, like I said, uh, just providing some information. This was about a 435 amp draw through copper and aluminum. And we had about 0.35 drop on one and about 0.52 drop on the other, um, over about three feet. Okay, so let's talk about these results and what they mean. At about 460 amps, we saw the 0.35 and 0.52 volts of drop, respectively. Um, one of the nice things about this, though, is it is linear, meaning that we can apply this math simply. Um, and by that, I mean we can divide it by 3 to find out exactly per foot and see that it's about 0 0.038 volts per foot on the copper and about 0 0.057 volts per foot on the copper clad aluminum. Furthermore, we can also reduce the amount of current by simply dividing it by three to get, you know, a more micro picture of what's going on. So at 153 amps, you see we're at 0 0.013 and 0 0.019 volts per foot, respectively. So overall, it's approximately 1.5 times greater voltage drop with the copper clad aluminum than it is with the copper. And that does fit in pretty well with the math of about 62% of the rate of conductivity in the aluminum wire as copper wire. So again, these are just the results. You can, you know, kind of divide or multiply these numbers to figure out any kind of current and length of wire that you may be using in your, you know, in your setup. And I hope this helps.